And I will manage to fix you.
No one? Okay. Well, so uh, now uh, Raf and I are going to to present uh, to talk a little bit about the, our col collaboration, and uh, uh, I, I will briefly introduce uh, my musical theory, the way in which I work, uh, and. Does it, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is a bit of a tangled. Topologically <laughs> very difficult. <laughs> Okay, so, well, I am Petrocini. Uh, you met a bit my work, my plane, <laughs> predominantly, uh, till now. And I would like to introduce a little bit my uh, musical theory, the way in which I work, and the reason also that is uh, uh, behind this uh, metamusical evening. So these different ways of working that I, that I have, and yeah, of course, the, the collaboration that I had um, with uh, Raf. So the, uh, I would like to outline first uh, the aim uh, of, of what I do, which is uh, to give a meta reformulation of mathematical groups, a mapping from the world of mathematics to the one of music, using the sensorial concreteness of the latter. So what I mean by this is that I, I aim to take uh, objects of mathematics and give them life uh, using the world of music. So I create visual analogies of these abstract structures. And uh, the key idea uh, is that I carry on an analogical and perceptual analysis of the structure and the elements of mathematical groups in terms of violence and purity. Now, again, what does this mean? <laughs> so I, I look at them with the eyes, uh, with the lenses uh, of violence and purity. Uh, and I look at them this way uh, because almost three years ago, I had a perception that led to this idea, uh, to this way of looking. Yeah, so the story of the idea. Uh, in the beginning of uh, 2020, I read these two books, written both uh, by mathematicians. Uh, the, the first one, uh, Music, a Mathematical Offering, by David Benson. And the second one, uh, by Nathan Carter, Visual Group Theory. And, uh, well, in the, in the first one, uh, there was a chapter focusing on group theory and music. And that led me to uh, grow some interest uh, into group theory because I found it very interesting. And uh, yeah, so then I, I found this other book <laughs> which uh, presented, and I outlined it also in the, in the slides, uh, a group theory, from, uh, like presented group elements as actions. And I think that that is fundamental to say because it's really related to m my way of working. I think that, yeah, that that's fundamental. And so one of the first groups that uh, were presented in this book was the, uh, yeah, agree. exactly, yes. Okay. Was the, uh, the group of symmetries of the triangle that Raf uh, presented uh, just before, in the talk before. And um, uh, yeah, here you can see the Kelly graph of it. Uh, so it's called the hydro group that are generated by flips and rotations, as exactly. So we have flips. Yes. That's a flip. Yeah. And that's a rotation. And they form this together a structure of six things, and this is, uh, the dihedral group, and that's 
one yeah. you studied first? Yes, one of it was one of the first that uh, that I encountered in this book, and that uh, yeah, to the led to this uh, to these ideas. So my main idea was a sensation. I connected this flipping, this reflective symmetry, to violence and rotation, rotational symmetry to to purity, and. Yeah, so then I, I wrote to this, this text that you can find uh, also on my website. And uh, in this text, uh, which is an introduction to my musical theory, uh, Ademish Purity Technique and Theory of My Musical Practice, I outline the elements that are of main interest to my musical practice. Uh, and uh, uh, my compositional approach uh, in relation to form. So there's rhythm and counterpoint, which is so in the first half. So uh, yeah, I composed these this, uh, tools that are a bit rhythmical, a bit, bit uh, uh, a lot of contradictions also within a very, con a lot of contrast in them. And uh, counterpoint, yeah, I mean, I played the art of fugue more than that. I mean, <laughs> that's, uh, that's quite a lot of counterpoint. And then forms are created as works within groups analyzed in terms of valence and purity. But one, one, one thing that I really want to convey is that for me, this is uh, like a method, a way of living a way of experiencing reality. And what I mean by that is that, to me, it's really about uh, forging a mind that can experience reality in, uh, in different ways. And uh, yeah, and then my works are a consequence of this process of forging, is what comes out uh, after uh, the, the forging, let's say. Uh, so yeah, on YouTube, you can find these works that were related to discrete symmetry. Uh, I wrote, uh, I started writing in 2020 some etudes uh, focusing on wallpaper groups, like the tiling that you saw on with Asher, like for instance, and uh, and then uh, there's a <laughs> uh, the the um, D3 generated by Gentleman and Jack. Now I, I think I'll just say it here because Gentleman and Jack were two of my like I had pet rats and I assigned uh, <laughs> to like Gentleman was a very soft, pure one and Jack was a very a bit peculiar. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that makes me smile. Um, yes. But then, so uh, up until uh, I had worked with discrete symmetry, with these groups that I could handle, let's say, but then I wanted to go from discrete to continuous. And uh, of course, I mean, I, was, I, I wondered like, what would happen if I were to apply my compositional ideas to, con uh, to continuous groups, and in particular to Lie groups? And uh, to develop these ideas in the context of continuous symmetry, I needed help. Like uh, the expertise of someone that truly understood Lie groups what they're about, there is. I mean, eh, yeah, more yeah. than me, for sure. <laughs> 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 <That's>, uh, <laughs> um, and so why, and, and this, I, I'm going to say it again, because I think it's, it's important, is that the focus uh, is on musically representing mathematical objects and giving them a life uh, to, to their meaning and to the sensation that can be found in them. So it's not uh, about their direct application or translation. And so in order to do this, a true understanding of the mathematical structures in question is necessary. It's uh, so just to say it's not like you take a function and then you just yeah. I mean I don't want to shade anyone, <laughs> but uh, let's say it's about meaning. So that's why I contacted uh, Eric uh, Optum uh, with the support of the conservatory and uh, uh, the, the, the head of uh, uh, of the department of mathematics uh, was uh, found it uh, well, somehow interesting. And then uh, that's how then we met, uh, uh, met later. So. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so maybe I'll say a few words about myself. So uh, I'm Ralph Bokland and I'm a mathematician at the University of Amsterdam and I'm a, I specialize in algebra and geometry. But I also like to do outreach as uh, explaining Mathematics to the general public, I find this really uh, fun to do and uh, thinking about how you could explain an abstract uh, concept like uh, a Lie group to a general audience is something that I, I, uh, yeah, I really like to think about. And so I've also, uh, a couple of years ago, I've given a talk at the Universiteit van Nederland, uh, which is uh, um, an organization that uh, yeah, ha has this YouTube videos where professors explain uh, a concept. And so I thought about uh, geometry in this uh, thing. And, uh, and so I'm really interested in outreach and I'm also interested in the visualization of abstract things. So, uh, so from my background, so um, 
uh, so my my father is a is a sculptor, and uh, one of the things is he was also interested in mathematics, and we discussed a lot of how to bring sculpting, uh, abstract mathematical things into sculpture and things like that. So I, I found this really interesting. Uh, but I don't know that much about music myself. As we are not a very musical family, but I'm always very up to broadening my horizons and, and I'm up to changing my perspective. And so when Petra came in, I thought, well, this, may, may, this it sounds like a fun thing to do. And so she came to my office and then we ta started talking about uh, mathematics and Lie groups. And it was a really very interesting experience because she was, well, she's not a mathematician, so she doesn't have the background in mathematics, but she was really uh, eager to get deep into the details, but in a completely different way than I uh, have with uh, mathematics students because she approaches things from a very other perspective. So she started, so we would stand on, uh, in front of the board and doing mathematics like I'm used to do, but then she would ask me very different questions and make me uh, think about the stuff differently. And that was what I found was very, nice uh, very intri intriguing and uh, interesting, yeah. Ah, thank you, I mean, that's, that's nice, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we? Oh, uh, yes, so um, now what I, what I define a uh, musical representation of the Lee group SO3 is the SO3 etudes, so the words that you, that you listen to. Uh, so it's a, music, um, a musical representation of the Lee group SO3 generated by analyzing its structure and elements in terms of valence and purity. Now, to get, I mean, a bit of a practical understanding <laughs> of what was the, the way of working, I decided to uh, show some excerpts. Um, so now I should yeah, connect so it to the. So maybe we can say so we we yeah. decided to, because so Lie theory is a very yeah. big subject. Yeah, 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 no, no, so yeah, I, I almost yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so that, that was the reaction. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so 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 we decided to focus on one Lie group in particular, ah, yes, and that yeah, is yeah. SO3. Yes. And that's where where these SO3 etudes come from. And so we just try to, well, discuss about really going into detail of the structure of SO3 and uh, how... Uh, yes, uh, yeah, and so, so uh, as, uh, as you showed in, the, uh, in your talk, we focused on the Lie algebra, so the first etude uh, deals with the Lie algebra, then we have the exponential map connecting the Lie algebra to the Lie group, and yes. then uh, the work within the Lie group. Yeah, so, so. so the idea was, when we uh, said that <laughs> Lie focused went deep into the, yeah, we used this magnifying glass. That's the first thing we did. And then we went back from, uh, we zoomed out with the exponential map to get the whole group again. Yep. And then uh, the last part is we looked at the different, yeah, different generators rotation. in the yes. group. So. And um, so we are going to, uh, so yeah, I'm going Peter to is going to give a few X serves and then Give some comments yeah, with it. I, cannot, I, cannot I, I will do that. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, okay, just give me one second. Okay. <laughs> just, I have to just change the, the file. Um, okay. So the, the first excerpt uh, that I will uh, play again uh, is from the first etude, and here uh, we have uh, the presentation of the three dimensions of the Lie algebra SO3, which are realized as three voices. So you have, and you will hear uh, one voice, two voices. We have th uh, these three chords, uh, and uh, after that, there's a presentation, one after the other, of the generators of the Lie algebra SO3, which are the generators of rotation. So you will hear this theme that is very frantic, very... Yeah, so this very sm these are these very small 
rotations. And you have three of them because you have three directions, main directions in which you can rotate. You can put it like this, like this yes. and like that. Okay. Oh no, wait, one, one more thing. So you see the purity, so this is the of smoothness, also it in the, in the uh, with the magnifying glass, we have these very short movements, very small movements, smooth movements, and so I connected this to theory, so that you con uh, to purity, so that you connect to all of the things that I said before. I mean, otherwise, <laughs> okay. I mean, I have a loud voice, so <laughs> usually, but <laughs> they told me that it's better if I speak in the my mic uh, for the recording, so, uh, okay. So yeah, the upper voice, the middle voice, and the lower voice, you could hear this frantic movement. And then, uh, yes, uh, oh yeah, this was actually, yeah. So yeah, so, so we've included the picture with, well, the three voices correspond to the three basic rotations, and they can be used to make any other one. So then, uh, okay. Okay. Well, so the questions we do afterwards. No? Uh, yeah, we do questions after. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. So the second excerpt focuses uh, on the exponential map. Yeah. So the exponential map is to go back to the big rotations, and that's uh, what uh, in Pitra's uh, musical theory is from purity, the small things, to violence, the yeah. big things. So you, you're going to compose very small things together, and then you end up with something big. Yes, like it's like also, there's the, <laughs> I think that, let like us say that the, there's this idea of, of using the vector fields, having these small, like little steps, and then we arrive at, the, at a point in the Lee group, and uh, we're jumping onto the point. So you have, <laughs> you will hear this voice that almost announces that we are, have arrived finally, and then there is a big dish. <laughs> and that, uh, that is the jumping that occurs, and we uh, arrive at the point. I love that part though. <laughs> uh, yes, so and the last excerpt uh, that we want to show is uh, about the, the walk within the group uh, SO3. 
So uh, here we go back to smoothness, to purity. We have, yeah, again, actions. So the uh, elements. Uh, yeah, of so the one of the things we do is a bit representing, yeah, the group it consists of rotations, but yeah, on the other hand, we have music. Well, how do you represent rotations into music? And that's yeah. uh, actually, we thought about, uh, yeah, looking at the score. Mm -hmm. And if you do the rotations to the score, you can... Yeah, like you've seen from the an outside perspective. Let's yeah, say you're looking at the so space. So you have to imagine the that, well, we are going to rotate the score and then try to see what happens to the music. So for instance, if we rotate uh, like this, then yeah, one bar comes in front and the other one retreats. And so there's a change uh, in dynamics. You represent this by a change in dynamics. Yes, yeah. And then, and then um, if you do like this, then, yeah, the, the notes, the closer notes get compressed and the, the yeah, notes so that recede, they get... Uh, yeah, so that it stretched. becomes accelerandos, the accelerandos are faster it, and slower. there's change in velocity. Yes. And then the final thing is, well, if you move like this, then you can imagine that the pitch goes up uh, because, yeah, the notes uh, rise. And yes. so <laughs> it was so kind of a, a, a fun way to... Yeah. Uh, yeah, get these rotations yeah, into uh, the musical score. Yeah, and this is the uh, the musical material that you hear now. It always comes back a bit uh, modified. So that's uh, yeah, that's the, the the main material that we're looking at. And um, ah, one thing that I'd like to say is that in the material of the rotation, I used actually the douche <laughs> was present in the in this uh, in these points when you reach the point, and I just enlarged it. So that we have uh, rotations that, like points, that become actions. They are seen as actions, and uh, I used, uh, uh, yeah, I, the, the the longer the the rotation, let's say, the more it takes, the longer I extended the material that was in the point, let's say, the dish. So you'll hear that always in the background. So now I will play again just the beginning. So you'll hear a rotation uh, of 30 degrees around the x-axis, and then we'll go back to the material, then another rotation around the, uh, of 30 degrees around the y-axis, and then, uh, of course, material, then rotation around the z-axis of 60 degrees, and then we go back to the material and we see what happens.
Okay, so. Yeah, so we end with a slide of some, if you're interested in some further work, Petra has a YouTube channel where you can see her playing and, uh, or, and the website. And uh, if yeah. you want to see her work, uh, damage purity on the discrete groups, you can also go to that thing. So uh, I included a link to um, my um, uh, talk at the University of, well, Universiteit van Nederland, if you're interested. And I also put up my website uh, on the KDVI and my personal website. So they can find them in the booklet if you're interested. Yeah, okay, thank you. And uh, if you have questions, you can meet us at the bar. Uh, we'll be very welcome to yeah, see what you think. If you have, yeah. Yep. Anything. Okay, thank you.